Joe, I'm going to go off scripture real quick because there's one other person in the audience who I'd like to recognize. Uh, you guys might know him, Dan Pastorini. He's yeah. the football, I think, a little bit. Now, Dan and I have a lot in common. Dan's Italian. I'm married to an Italian, and we're the same height if you just invert the numbers. So, Dan, thanks for coming out today. Okay, it's time to get the show on the road. I want to introduce our founder. Uh, he's the founder of BizPack, and he's the executive chairman. He's also a founder and past chairman of the Houston Angel Investor Network. He's also a founder and board member of the Houston Technology Center. He is one of the founding board members for NASA iTech, which is Future Space Exploration Technologies. High tech commercial real estate developer of over two and a half million square feet. Telecom, fiber optic, cable television, satellite industrialist, biotechnology. Did you write all this stuff? I'm that old. You're stroking yeah. your ego here. Ladies old. and gentlemen, J.L. Trahan. Thank you, Darv. Thank you very much. Um, you know what I'm going to do real quick? I think there's some elected officials in the room that we skipped, and I don't want to get past that. I apologize for that. Okay. So Darby made that mistake. I did not. Let me introduce a few city councilmen to you. Mike Knox, councilman at large, right back here. Thank you. Also have councilman Michael Kubosh right here. Okay. Let's see. If there is an elected official in this room that I have not identified, please raise your hand. I'd also like to thank the Texas Tea Party American, uh, Texas Tea Party Republican women uh, for being here. Norma Brady Jeter, one of my favorite people. <laughs> just, just to let you know, it's not uncommon at one o'clock in the morning that we're trading text messages and, and give up and get on a phone call because we're trying to work through some kind of an issue. And she's just such a great guide. And I want to, I want to kind of point her out to you to know and, and uh, recognize uh, her and her sister, are probably the founders of the Harris County Republican Party. And it wasn't an easy thing to do. Um, there are some stories. They're, they're lucky that they weren't, uh, their car wasn't run off the road and run into White Oak Bayou at some point, I think. It was pretty rough in the beginning. But I wanted to thank her for coming and being here. And if you don't, if you don't know her, please go over and say hello to her. Okay. All right. So you know what we're doing here today, right? To meet the candidate interview. It's been a while since we did one. It's one of my favorite things to do. Because as business owners, we're making the decision where the buck stops in our businesses. We want to get down to it. We want the truth. We're analytical. We're pragmatic. We want the details. So if you guys remember, our, we just had gotten going. BizPack had just got going good with the Meet the Candidate interviews. And then this COVID thing came around and none of the restaurants and, and all would host us because they were scared to death they were going to get fined by Lena Hildago. Right. They didn't want that to happen. And uh, and so that kind of shut down our ability to have larger events. Now we can have them. One of the things that we did to solve that problem, if you look in the corners of the room, you'll see machines, kind of a growing green light back over there and over there. The, these machines are military technologies, 15 years old, seventh generation. These machines kill every pathogen in the room. It's called H2O2 air gas, hydrogen peroxide air gas, safe for people, pets and plants. They're one of the sponsors of BizPack. So that's one of the reasons we feel comfortable with you coming in the room is we're protecting all of our events with this equipment. So I want you all to know that if you invite people and they're concerned, tell them, hey, they always protect their meetings with the top military technology to kill pathogens. You should feel safe in here. So I want you all to know that, okay? We love our people. We want nobody getting sick. We want all of our people healthy. So we try to protect the event. So enough of that infomercial, okay? <laughs> But of course, if you'd like to buy one, let me know. Okay. There's a whole table full of people over here that'll sell them to you. Okay, <laughs> right over here too. All right, so we have a special guest today, and I don't know if any of you saw CPAC. You maybe you watched CPAC when it was aired, right? If you watch CPAC, let me see. Let me see how many did it. Great, great. And so you're watching CPAC and. And everything's going along great, and Trump's got everybody standing up in the chair, and they're screaming and yelling and happy, right? And then uh, it was time for the governor to come on, and he didn't come on, right? So they move on down the, the program, and this, this fellow that's a former Texas senator from the, from the North Dallas Plano area, he comes on, and he, he's cordial and nice, 
And about four minutes into his nine minute speech, he's got people up in their chairs, clapping, standing up. You know, by the end of the speech, they're standing in their chairs in the back of the room shouting and screaming. And I'm watching this CPAC with my father. And my father's uh, an old US military veteran, a tough old Italian fella. And his comment was, that's the guy right there. Right, and so I knew we had to get I knew we had to get Don Huffines down here for a Meet the Candidate interview. So he's going to come up right now. Don Huffines, welcome to the stage. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, Joe. I'm going to hand this mic over and let Don introduce himself to you because he can do a lot better than me. But I will, I will tell you this. I've known, I've known his family. My father even did business with his family up in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, and years and years ago. And he's a fabulous uh, uh, commercial real estate developer up in that, prolific actually in that area. The Huffine name is, is known very well in North Texas. And I actually ran into you, your yeah. venture capital firm on a deal back in the mid 2000s. And his, his guys, his analytical guys were so sharp that they let me lose money on that deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I must have lost too. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand the mic to you. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Joe, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, hello, Patriots. Yeah. Hello, Patriots. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun. All right, great. What a great organization. It's really an honor to be here. I've always loved coming to Houston. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself, a little bio, then I'm gonna I'm tell you about my experience in the Texas Senate. And I know you guys have got some experience down there in the Capitol, I can certainly see that. But I'm gonna tell you what really happens behind closed doors. I'm gonna tell you what, pull the curtain back and why your conservative legislation doesn't get done. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories. I've got a lot, but I'm gonna shorten and just do a couple of them. Uh, and I'm, what I'm gonna say is something you're never gonna hear from anybody else uh, and you never have heard from anyone else in the legislature because there's that unwritten rule that we have that we don't talk about what really goes on. Then I'm going to tell you why I'm running for your gov governorship, why I'm going to be a governor, why I'm running, and why we're going to win. All right, well, as he said, I was born in Dallas, Texas. I'm a fifth-generation Texan. I grew up in the Metroplex. I, let's see. I'll just say this. I, I was always um, interested in, in business and politics, and uh, I majored in finance at, at UT Austin. I graduated in 81. And then I married my beautiful, perfect wife. Best thing that ever happened to me right here, 34 years. Give her a hand. Mary Catherine. If you haven't met her, you should. Uh, five children, four boys and a girl. All four boys were Eagle Scouts. I was a scout master and did all that. And we homeschooled our children to make sure they grew up in a conservative Christian environment. <clears throat> and uh, so politically, though, my bio is... I always had something burning in me that a lot of y'all probably do, and I call it the flame of liberty. And it, it never goes out. Sometimes it burns a lot brighter. When I was a teenager, I, I decided I had, to, I had to do something, and I read books by Murray Rothbard and others, and I started working for helping Ronald Reagan against Gerald Ford in 76 primary. And then I was a delegate for, to the county convention when I was 18 by two weeks, and I was able to vote for Reagan. And it's always been active somewhat, quite a bit since then, always supporting the conservative candidates, supporting the Republican Party that I loved. I've been to 10 state conventions and uh, three national conventions. How many of y'all have been to a state convention? Oh my gosh, this is great. Uh, excellent, excellent. Well, you know what we do down there. We knew what we do at our county conventions and precinct conventions. Anyway, in 13, I got tired of yelling at the TV and, and I'm a, I love my guns and uh, I love to hunt and there was a trophy on the wall that I didn't have and that was a trophy rhino. I really needed and he was sitting in Senate District 16. <laughs> rhino, get it? Y'all get it, okay. Republican in name only? Okay, everybody gets that, good. All right, well anyway, I beat him heads up in the primary and so uh, he'd been in office 25 years, most liberal Republican in Austin. And I was there from 14 to 18. I was 14 to 18. I got knocked out in 18 when the Democrats finished taking over Dallas County. And uh, there's three elected Republicans in Dallas County right now out of probably 80 partisan positions. As you probably know, Trump lost the county three to one. But I, so when I was in the Senate, 
Uh, there, well, I'll just tell you a few things that I got done that I was proud of. I'm, according to the Secretary of the Senate, I'm the only elected office holder in the history of the state of Texas. We got a long history that never took a penny from, this, from the government. No pay, no pension, no health care, no per diem, no reimbursements, no travel vouchers, nothing. I never took any money from the state of Texas, didn't even use their office furniture. And I did that because I'll never work for the government. I ever planned to. I work for the people that sent me there, and I'm going to do the same thing as your governor. Never going to take any money from the state. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I was ranked one of the most conservative, if not the most conservative, state senator in Austin when I was there for the two sessions. If you're not familiar with your scorecards, you really need to be. But let me warn you about scorecards uh, when they do ranking. It, it's only vote. You, of course, they can only rank on the vote you take. It's the votes you don't take that you fight for that's the most important, because I'm going to tell you some stories. Also, I uncovered the biggest political corruption scandal in modern Texas history is an obscure government agency that you have one right here in Harris County. We had one in Dallas County. It's called Dallas County Schools. You've got Harris County Schools, the last two remaining countywide school districts in the state of Texas. Well, the more I dug into the one in Dallas, the more I uncovered just a massive amount of corruption. You know, that's an elected school board. They had 3,000 employees, $110 million annual budget, and they were stealing tens of millions of dollars. When I say it's the largest, it's about how much money an elected board could steal. They stole tens of millions. I got, got the Rangers involved in, in the FBI. We got six people put in prison, including the city mayor pro tem, the city council of Dallas. So, thank you. I got a bill done in Austin to close that agency down. It was very difficult to do. They don't exist anymore. We dissolved them completely. But I shouldn't have been surprised because let me tell you what happens in Austin. Our very, right after inauguration in 2015, we, the lieutenant governor called a, a meeting of the caucus as a whole. As you probably know, there's only 31 state senators. When I was there, there was only 20 Republicans and 11, and there was 11 Democrats. Now there's 18. But he called a meeting, so all the senators come into the room. And it's right after inauguration, and I'm sitting in there, and here comes Lieutenant Governor, and he comes marching in the room, and he says, welcome, senators. Welcome to the most exclusive club in the state of Texas. There's less than 150 of y'all still alive. He said, your loyalty's always with the Texas Senate. Your loyalty's always with your fellow club members. You will not do anything to embarrass the Texas Senate. You will not do anything to hold your fellow senators accountable. There's nothing more important than what happens with your fellow club members. And he goes off on that. And he goes off on that more than once in a lot of different meetings. But I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, it must be just me. Now I get it. I was always wondering why they call legislators members. And they do that in Washington. Well, they know exactly what they are. They are club members. Then they think about that every day. That's how they exist. Part of the club. And who's going to be the leader of the club? And how do you move up into the club rankings? How many bills you get done? Well, then the next week, I go to my very first Republican Senate caucus meeting. We meet in a restaurant. They still do. Every Monday night. And... Uh, we're going around the table talking about it. I'm nervous. I take in there my second favorite document, this right here. And all you folks that have been in a party, party, you know what we do. It's our party platform, our Republican Party platform. It's got 300 planks in here that we want to be law. It's all the resolutions we put together. I've worked on it for decades, as y'all probably worked on it for decades. And what's, what have we worked on since, since we had a Republican Party in the state of Texas? Was always trying to get our legislators to pay attention to our platform, our legislative priorities. That's what we do. <clears throat> and I've been on your, in your chair for so many years, so I take it with me. And, and I, I hold it up, and I tell everybody what it is, and they're looking at me really odd, you know, and they're going, what? They really don't get that deal. And I said, guys, there's this one thing we, I really want us to get done this session. And then I said, I want to get constitutional carry done. And thank you. <laughs> 
So I said, guys, and I go off on it a little bit, and I said, you know, the Second Amendment's not about shooting a burglar or shooting a deer. You know, those are all good parts of it. It's always, it's all, uh, obviously about being the backstop against tyranny. That's what it's all about. This is to protect us from tyrannical governments. There's no question about that. And I said, so let's get some of our natural rights back. You know, this is, this is not a privilege. This is a right that we have. And I said, oh, you know, if you don't want to vote for it, I get it. I understand. I hope to persuade you otherwise. But let's get her to the floor and we can vote on it. Then everybody can see where you stand on this issue and you can be accountable to the voters that sent us here. And you, you know what I heard? <laughs> Silence. And then a fork hit a plate. And, and it really sounded like a church bell. It was so loud. Then, gradually, one, two, three, four, or more senators got up from the table in the middle of the meal and left the room. Well, the rest of the night was very awkward for me. <laughs> very awkward. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> the next morning, a messenger comes into my office. He says, hey, Senator Huffines, you need to apologize for what you said to the Republican Senate caucus meeting last night. I said, really, what did I say? And he said, you specifically said you're going to hold fellow Republicans accountable to the voters. I'm looking at him like, I did, and I'm damn sure not apologizing. All right. Thank you. <laughs> But I tell you that story so you can understand that most of your Republican office holders, they don't like you. They really don't. As a matter of fact, they, can, they belittle you. They make fun of us. I was cussed at and screamed at on that Texas, in that Texas Senate more than I ever have been in my adult life. My battle was always with the rhinos. The Democrats were honest. They weren't ever for me. But the rhinos would lie. They were always, they'd lie so much they'd forget what they're lying about. That's why they don't like you. They really don't like you because you might hold them accountable. You might hold them accountable to their campaign promises. You might hold them accountable to this document. Right here at the party platform. I mean, have you ever seen this in our governor's hands? No, you never have, and you never will. Because I know you, you know that we control everything in Austin, the House, the Senate, the governorship for 20 years. We can get any bill done, the Republican Party, that we want, really pretty quickly, any bill we want. It's about leadership. <clears throat> You're going to get a couple of issues done this session. Just like we did in the regular session. I've been telling this tale for two, a year and a half. You're going to get, we got two, deal, two of the top nine deals we have, uh, legislative priorities. We got two of them passed. That's what happens every, every session. What happened in 15, 17, 19, 21. It's all about leadership from the governor. It really is. Do you know why you don't see the governor talking about that? Do you know why we don't get our legislative priorities done? Because he doesn't believe in them. If he believed in it, it would be law. He believed in pre-K education in 2015. He got every senator but two, me and another guy, to vote for it. It wasn't an effort for him. If he believes in, in mental health for, to, so you could buy a gun, he gets everybody to vote for it. He doesn't believe in our party platform, so I just point this out. I say, if you don't believe in it, if you only believe in 20% of that or 30% of it, which is a fact, are you a Republican? How much of it do you need to believe in before you say you are a Republican or you're not a Republican? I've got Democrats that believe in 20% of it. So, thank you. So they're, they're rhinos. He's a rhino, Republican in name only. He's a career politician. Well, he's been 31 years in elected office. I've been creating thousands of jobs. 
He is a political windsock blowing in the wind, trying to determine where he needs to be to further his career, because that's what career politicians do. I'm not interested in a new career. I'm not interested in a new job. I'm only interested in being governor because the job's not getting done and for the love of Texas and to save Texas. The catalyst for me to get into this race happened in March of 20 when I sent a tweet out warning everybody what was going to happen if they listened to that lying Fauci. When he came out and said, oh, this is from bat soup, I said, oh, seriously? <laughs> I'm a Boy Scout. You boil your soup before you eat it. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then Abbott believes in all that. He shuts us all down. And I put an op-ed out in every newspaper. Most papers picked it all up, begging him to open it up. Two weeks is all we had. Remember, two weeks, that's all it was going to be. And one day, he put 3.1 million Texans in unemployment. Three million Texans in unemployment. All depended on the government. He destroyed tens of thousands of jobs that people worked on for their generations. Boom! It was all gone. He didn't care. The Constitution doesn't give him the authority to do that. I would have never done that. And then he closed our churches. He closed our churches over the holiest week of the year, Easter. You couldn't bury the dead. You couldn't get married properly. You couldn't get baptized. And it went on and on. And then he has a mask mandate on us for nine months. And, he, and everybody thanks him for taking it off. And I said, that's like thanking a thief for bring, bringing some of your stolen goods back. But I'm, I'm running because I'm like you. I'm tired of being lied to. I'm tired of being used. I'm tired of the broken and empty promises. Is the border secure? No. Are your property taxes going down? No. no I, uh, do you have confidence your votes aren't being stolen? No. Then they can go all the way down the list. I've got, I'm the only candidate running that's got a comprehensive plan to secure the border, to phase out your property taxes, give you confidence in the elections. I'm the only business guy that's going to be sitting in that chair in the last, since, the last, since Bill Clements run, won it in 78. We have a different way of seeing things. A completely, I want to solve the issues that affect Texas. Because I don't care about, I'm going to charge forward. If we make a mistake, I'll own it. I want to be accountable. And that's the biggest difference. This is about leadership. Leadership, no excuses. The governor is supposed to be the guy that mediates between the House and the Senate to keep them from fighting each other. He's nowhere to be found. Where's the governor? Mark has sat in more committee hearings than our governor ever has. He was never in the legislature. I'm the only candidate running for governor that was ever in the legislature. It's a huge advantage. It really is. It's a massive advantage. But I do get excited when I see great groups like this, Joe, out here, because I know you understand where our liberties come from. I want to tell you that the lens I look through is a lens of freedom and liberty. What is the fundamental role of government? It's a, it's a question I ask that could have been answered for 100 years clearly by everyone in America. And it's always to defend your God-given liberties. Your liberties come from God, of course, and not the government. It was a unique concept that today most people in most parts of the world cannot ever get through their head. You go to Europe today, you ask that question, and you present that to them. They can't understand it. You go to Asia, they don't understand it. Our founders did. It was a liberal idea that you were born of inalienable rights, of course, rights and not privileges. And they wrote this document that we swear allegiance to. It's very fundamental. They wrote this to protect your God-given liberties from the, the number one threat they knew they, that you would ever have to that. And that was the government they were creating. The government was always the threat to what you already have, your natural rights, your natural liberties. And I know you know that. 
That's why I have confidence in you. I, I really do. We're going to, I can tell you that our paradigm of the past and the present doesn't dictate our future. We have unlimited possibilities that are awaiting us. This is going to be a new chapter in Texas history. This, unfortunately, it's not that Abbott is, but overall, a case versus good versus evil. Socialism always leads to communism and tyranny. And the horrors are unimaginable. And I look at it this way. The Democrats want to get there today. The rhinos and the Republican Party, we're going to get there next week. But we're all sliding down that same slope. We are. We're going to stop it. We're going to, we're going to make sure that we get our liberties restored. I need you to help me. Unsheath your, your, your swords of liberty and help me cut the chains of government. Help me awaken the sheep from their slumber. Help me awaken them so they too can restore our liberties that have been stolen from us. Our economic liberties, our personal liberties. They're in, you can't separate them. Awaken them to the power of the individual. Awaken them to the power of our Constitution. Awaken them to the power of the free market. Because, guys, this is Texas. We will bend a knee to no man to no government for no reason. This is Texas. This is the most important election in the country in 22. This could be the most important election in the history of our country, one of them anyway. I'm going to show not just the country what it means for a state to be sovereign. I'm going to show the world. We're not going to lose Texas because when we do, we lose the free world. I'm going to make sure Texas gets its swagger back. Thank you. Our time is coming, our time is now. Our greatest days are yet to dawn, and I mean it. This is a new chapter in Texas history, one you've never seen. I'd like for you to get part, be part of that. God bless you, God bless Texas, for liberty, prosperity, and virtue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.